The past few weeks I've been focusing on chemical reactions that we can use to create hydrogen or oxygen. This resulted in beautiful pops and sizzles and hopefully an understanding on how these processes work. Today I'm going to show a technique that can be used to create hydrogen and oxygen by splitting water molecules. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, the channel where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and do experiments. If you like these videos and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. In the experiments with hydrogen and oxygen, we made use of chemicals and forced them to react. We saw that zinc and hydrochloric acid reacted and formed hydrogen. When you heat potassium permanganate, you'd get oxygen as a result. Now today we will create both oxygen and hydrogen by using a technique called electrolysis. Now what is that? Well, electrolysis is the process of using electricity to split a molecule into a few elements. In this case we use electricity to split water into oxygen and hydrogen. Now this may sound a bit strange. How can a liquid be separated into two gases? I'll tell you more about this at the end of the video. Now we do electrolysis in this case by running an electric current through the water. Now, pure water or distilled water does not conduct electricity. So we need to do something about that. You can make water conductible by adding a salt. Now you could use table salt, like sodium chloride, but when the reaction takes off, you would also get chlorine gas, which is dangerous. So we will use something else, magnesium sulfite heptahydrate, or as my wife would call it, Epsom salt. Now the electrons will run freely in the water. It is a source in the water that can create that electricity that we need in a form of direct current, or DC form if you like. A 9 volt battery is what we will use in this video. So now we have everything we need to start breaking or splitting the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. This experiment does not contain any dangerous chemicals, but as I experienced the battery can start leaking. Also you will be creating pure hydrogen and oxygen. So in case of doing these experiments, make sure to use protective gloves, splash goggles and a lab coat. So, time to start the experiment. As said, I will be using 3 liters of distilled water and I'll use some Epsom salt. After that, we will make sure to have two test tubes that are filled with water that I will place in stands to make sure they do not move. After that, I decided to go for the easy way, which is placing the battery inside of the water under the test tubes. In the future, I'll be showing a more sophisticated technique, but for the purpose of showing the process, this was good enough. As soon as I place the battery, you will see that on both sides, bubble will start to come from the battery. On the minus or anode side of the battery, the bubbles will be hydrogen, and on the plus side or cathode, side of the battery, the bubbles will be oxygen. What also will show is that the test tube of the hydrogen will fill twice times as fast as the oxygen tube. In about one and a half hours the test tube of hydrogen will be filled and after three hours the test tube of oxygen will be filled. It is now time to test again if we have oxygen and hydrogen. So now it's time to test if we succeeded. First the hydrogen via the by now known way and here is the oxygen which we will test the same way that we did previously. Now let's talk a little bit about how a liquid can be formed with two gases. Well we see this also with hydrochloric acid where hydrogen and chlorine form a liquid. Now, how that works could be a topic that we can discuss in a separate video, as the process is quite complicated and we would need some backstory. But let me try to give you some context on how some of this works. All of chemistry can be explained by electrical forces that pull and push on each other. And these small differences in electrical charges and how elements interact with each other have a big effect on how we perceive the world around us. Because of the interaction between hydrogen and oxygen, the boiling point of the molecule created will be a lot higher than the separate elements. 
I know this is a highly simplified explanation, but I hope it gives you some perspective that is somewhat understandable. So, that's it for today. If you think I missed something, make sure to put it in the comments. Next week I will be discussing a cube again, an element, and if you don't want to miss that episode, make sure to subscribe. <laughs>